Did you know that buying a house is one of the top five most stressful things you will do in your entire life? And for the most of us, it's going to be the biggest investment we will ever make. My name is Gabby, the managing broker of NextGen Real Estate in Northeast Illinois. And today I wanna to share with you what it takes to become a homeowner. Don't forget to subscribe and comment below on where you are in the process. State handles a real estate transaction differently. In some states, using a real estate attorney is required. In others, the title company is allowed to prepare all the transfer documents. Even though the attorney may not be required in your state, I highly recommend using one. There's just so much more to buying real estate than just preparing transfer documents and pointing to the signature line. So without further ado, here is step number one, credit score. In the most basic explanation, a credit score is a number that in banks' eyes represents the likelihood of you paying off the mortgage without defaulting on your loan terms. Building a credit history does not happen overnight, and it will be a very high factor to what type of loan you'll be able to obtain from the bank, which will also affect what type of a property you'll be able to purchase and how much the bank will lend to you. Stay tuned for a video dedicated specifically to building your credit score. I will show you how I was able to raise my credit score by 97 points in just 30 days. Step number two, get your finances in place. Some of the things you want to budget for through this process are your down payment, which depends on what type of loan you get. For example, with some loans, you'll be able to purchase a home by putting down as little as 3% of the purchase price. Now, there will also be out-of-pocket expenses that will need to be paid before you even get to the closing table. You will be required to pay for the inspection and the appraisal. Now, every other cost such as loan origination, attorney fees, and closing costs will be tied into your grand total at the closing. In our area, the attorney fees and the inspection is roughly around $500 each, and the closing costs end up around 2% of the purchase price on the buy side. I also encourage you to pay attention to your lifestyle and your monthly expenses. Just because the bank allows you to loan up to 45% of your monthly income does not mean that you should. Remember, your monthly payment will include principal and interest payments on the loan, property taxes, and insurance. Now, as a new owner, what you also need to start budgeting for are expenses such as maintenance, repairs, and mechanical replacements. The last thing you want to do is become house poor. Step number three. With the crazy market we're experiencing right now, as a buyer, you're at a disadvantage. You have more buyers than ever to compete with for a property, and the inventory is lower and lower with each month. You want to make sure that you know what you absolutely need and recognize what you could live without. Properties are getting multiple offers within hours, so you want to make sure that you are mentally prepared to take action when you find the house that you love. Now, it is okay to get to know your market, but do not waste your time on seeing properties without being pre-approved. Reason number one why you do not want to do that is because you do not want to fall in love with a property that you might not be able to afford just yet. You will spoil yourself and have unrealistic expectations. Now, reason number two is that even if you end up qualifying for a loan in that price range and you will want to submit an offer, in order to be seriously considered, you will need a pre-approval from a lender which might take a few days to obtain, and those extra days might cost you losing to a buyer that is already pre-approved. Step number four, find a rockstar team. We all know that it is super exciting to search for homes online, and with technology and websites like Redfin, Zillow, Realtor.com, it is easier than ever to see what is available on the market. It will be easy for you to assume that the process is as easy as clicking a few buttons on the phone. As an agent, I will tell you that especially now, you are at a disadvantage if you do not have a rockstar team that is there to back you up. You will need an agent, a lender, inspector, and an attorney. Now, you want to start your process with finding a top agent that specializes in your area. As an agent myself, my number one recommendation is to follow the referrals of your real estate agent. Do not break down the dynamic of a team that already knows how to work well together. 
I know that along the way you will meet a friend's cousin, dog's walker son that has an uncle that is an attorney and will discount his fees just for you. But in my professional opinion, the headache and the breakdown of a team dynamic might cost you losing your dream home. Keep in mind that at the end of the day, as a buyer, you do not have to pay your agents to represent you. Agents get paid at the closing and the commission is deducted from the seller's proceeds. Next up, loan pre-approval. The very first introduction that your agent should be making is to their preferred lenders. From them, you will be asked to submit a number of documents that include proof of employment, last two years of your income taxes, and bank statements to make sure that you qualify to obtain a mortgage. Now, the three most common loans that are out there are FHA, VA, and conventional. They all have different, ever-changing requirements and regulations, but the main differences are as follows. FHA allows for a lower credit score, a little higher down payment, have stricter property standards, and always require a private mortgage insurance. VA is a zero dollars down option for American veterans. Those loans have very competitive rates and require no private mortgage insurance. And there's conventional loan, which requires a higher credit score allows for a slightly smaller down payment and not as strict about property standards and only requires mortgage insurance when your down payment is less than 20% and it can be canceled after that. Next step, ideally, this is where your home searching begins. In normal market conditions, I would encourage my clients to see a few properties at a time. But in today's mar market, I encourage them to run as soon as the property that fits their criteria hits the market. Remember, it is a seller's market, which as a buyer puts you in a disadvantage. You have lots of competition and it is not the time for you to be picky about the conditions of the houses. So in turn houses, pay attention to the big ticket items versus cosmetics that can easily be changed. Next one, submitting the offer. You are at a point where you have already found the house of your dreams and you want to present your offer to the seller. Your agent will prepare the contract for you while you decide on a few factors. The price you want to offer, the earnest money, which is the good faith deposit, how big of a down payment you want to make, and the closing date. Your agent should assist you with running a report on what comparable properties sold for in the area to help you come up with the amount that you want to offer. The sellers will also provide you with disclosures that you will read and acknowledge. In our area, the most common disclosures are mold, lead-based paint, radon and the standard property disclosure. To present your offer as the strongest and capable buyer, you will want to attach your pre-approval for a loan or proof of funds if it's a cash transaction to your offer. After submitting an offer, there are a few varieties of outcomes. One, offer gets accepted and you move on to the next step. Two, your offer gets declined, at which point you need to start searching for a new home again. Or you are at a multiple offer situation and the sellers will ask for your best and final offer by a deadline. In this situation, you want to check in with your lender and check at your finances. Talk to your lender and then remember to make an offer based on what you feel comfortable with. It will be easy for your ego to get in the way and I see so many buyers overpaying for their homes. Stay tuned for my video on how to position yourself to win in a bidding war. Next step, acceptance of the offer. This is the time you will be the most involved in the process. At this point, the sellers and you as the buyer agreed on all terms of the contract. The contract is signed by both of the parties and the earnest money is delivered. Next step, attorney and inspection review. This step varies state to state. In the contract utilized by realtors in our area, we enter what is now called the attorney and inspection review. The wording in our contract gives the buyers five days to perform a professional inspection and have the attorney to review the contract and make any necessary changes. If they need more time to review or agree on specific terms, the attorneys can easily extend that period to ensure you are protected. One very important item that is ne negotiated during that time with the help of the attorneys is the inspection report. In the state of Illinois, you hire a licensed inspector to examine the property and make sure that the condition of the real estate you are purchasing satisfies you. The sellers will make the home available for the inspections and the inspector will look for any issues on both the exterior and interior. I highly encourage all of my clients to be present at that time because at the end of the day, it will very likely become your home and the inspector will point out things to look out for in the future. 
It typically takes about 24 to 48 hours for the inspector to write a full report and deliver it to you. In the event that something concerning comes up, there are a few different outcomes that can happen. You can back out of the deal and move on to the next property. You can request the seller to take care of the repairs, or you can ask the seller for the credit at the closing so you'll be able to take care of the repairs yourself. Next step, applying for your mortgage. When you approve the conditions of the house and while the attorneys are sorting things out, you want to start your process of applying for the loan. You want to make sure that the lender has all the most recent documents and your loan application is complete. At this time, they also order the appraisal. The appraisal is done at your cost and it ensures the bank that you are not borrowing more money than the property is worth. The appraisal is typically done within the next week or so. In case the appraiser does not believe that the property is worth what the buyer is offering, here are a few things you could do. Renegotiate the purchase price with the seller. Come up with the difference in cash. Challenge the appraisal or back out of the deal. And if you choose to move forward with this option, your costs of inspection and appraisal will not be recovered. Next step, loan underwriting. Depending on the type of a loan you're applying for, the bank will ask you for different types of documentation. You will be on a very close watch, so do not make any big purchases. Large Deposit large amounts of cash, change jobs, or take on loans or additional credit card debt. This can all hurt you in obtaining final approval for your loan, and that is, that is true all the way up to the closing date. One of the requirements to get approved for a loan is obtaining home insurance. So make sure you shop around for the rate and coverage. Also, make sure that the property does not have any open claims and history that will affect how much you will be paying moving forward. Next step, clear to close. Once the bank approves you for a loan, the attorneys will be able to officially schedule the closing. In Illinois, the closing takes place at a title company, typically chosen by the seller's attorney. Before the closing, the lender will give you the exact amount that you need to wire to the title company. A warning, there is a lot of wire fraud happening, so ensure you verify all instructions with your attorney and the title company by phone. Next step, final walkthrough. I encourage all my clients to do a walkthrough right before the closing. Remember, you are the owner of the property after signing the closing documents, so make sure you look thoroughly. If there are some issues that come up, notify your attorney immediately, and they will address the issues with the seller's attorney before the signing begins. Next step, closing time. Times have changed a bit and sellers typically do not show up at the closing. They are pre-signing all the documents ahead of time and the seller's attorney typically works remotely. And because of the virus, the agents are not essential to the closing are asked not to come to minimize the contact. It is most likely that you will be sitting at a closing table with your attorney and the closing agent from the title company. Your attorney will review all the documents with you. After signing all of the documents, they will be sent to the lender. At that point, you will just be waiting for the deal to fund. And just like that, you're a homeowner. For all of you that are sticking to the end, I want to give you this last bonus step that I believe is the most important first step as a brand new homeowner, and that is estate planning. I know we do not like to talk or even think about this, but I truly believe that we owe it to our family to plan for those inevitable situations. As I mentioned in the very beginning, your home is one of the biggest investments of your life, and you want to make sure that when the time comes, the last thing that your family should be worried about is your assets, death, taxes, courts, and legal fees. I strongly encourage that you take some time meet with an attorney that specializes in estate planning. If you found any value in this information, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.